what's good everybody, I don't know if you can hear me or not or whatever, but I'm gonna decide this is gonna be like my Monday drive I start doing to where I do like 10 plus minute video about boxing on my way to work or whatever. But anyways, guys, it's your boy Banco Boxing. Um so this weekend we had Triple G versus Steve Rose. And since I'm not looking at anything, I could not tell you what this man was ranked. But it ended just like we thought it would. But the funny thing is that Steve Rose is actually hitting Golovkin with some shots, bro. Like, we've been telling people for the longest that Golovkin don't have defense. He cannot box off the back foot. Like Troy King say, shout out to Troy Killer Entertainment uh, King YouTube channel is uh, I think it's Courtney on Ochivo, something like that. But you type in Troy Killer Entertainment, it should pop up on uh, YouTube. But in order to be an elite champion, you gotta have defense. And Triple G never had it. That's why his toughest fights are debatable because he don't have no defense. I tell people all the time, I cannot vouch for this man because he stayed at one weight class his whole career and his biggest fights he did not dominate so how can I put you at pound for pound number one and then all you want to do is fight Canelo you don't want to fight nobody if you really were trying to fight somebody you would have said I'm going to fight Rocky Fielding then I'm going to fight uh, Demetrius Andrade for his w WBC belt and then I'll fight Canelo for all the belts if he was trying to fight somebody, he ain't trying to fight nobody. And then all they do is try to compare Steve Rose to Fielding. To be honest, I didn't know who Rocky Fielding was either. I guarantee he was rated higher than Steve Rose. Number two, he had a belt. And I was just telling people, it was a move to get four belts and four different weight classes. Because I think Canelo's fought 147, 154, 160, and then 168. It's just a move. That's why he didn't keep on it because he didn't plan a campaign at 168 at that time. So I don't even know what people be talking about. They just be on Facebook on people nuts, man. And they can never defend anything they say. Every time I bring up Golovkin three Christmas wins, they have nothing to say. Nothing. Because he's not nice like that. If, if Roy Jones would have stayed at 160 his whole career, niggas would have been like, oh, he trash. Some dude tried to stop some. Oh, Bernard, I'm saying, first of all, Bernard Hopkins fought at 160, 168, and 175. So, like I said, niggas just be talking with no facts. But anyways, you still got the situation where you got Anthony Joshua and Ruiz talking about a rematch. Joshua shouldn't, that should not be his first fight back. If he is going to D, get another trainer, he needs another trainer. And he needs a literal tune-up, for real, so he can work out on the stuff. He needs to, uh, he probably needs to trim down, too. Uh, he look really stiff when he fights. He's so big. You know, if, if boxing don't work out, he probably could be a bodybuilder. But he, he's too big. You don't really see any other heavyweights muscular like him. Muscular, your body definition don't necessarily mean you're going to be a good fighter when it comes to boxing. Or that you're going to be the best fighter because uh, Tim Bradley was always in shape. You know, he was a good fighter, but when it came to fight Manny Pacquiao, it didn't really hit him all the time. But yeah, if, if he if he rematches Andy Ruiz too fast, it's just gonna it's gonna be like Kovalev versus Ward, but worse. And then Joshua either may stop boxing for a while or just stop boxing in general because he, he won't never be the same if he loses twice at the same the same type of way. But, and the last thing I want to touch on was about the potential Sean Porter and Errol Spence fight. Supposedly supposed to be happening at the end of the year. Kenny and Sean said they signed a contract. And so they waiting on Errol. So now people are trying to, you know, put the gas on uh, Errol. They kind of like on Errol head. But, like CJ Goodfella said, for all we know, Arrow might be negotiating a bigger fight or a better fight. So it definitely don't count as a duck. But 
it's just like at the same time, the fans don't have the same energy that they was having. Not even the fans, but Sean and them was acting like they was going to fight Spence at the end of the year, even though we don't know what the, all the inner backings was. I knew that wasn't going to happen because no, no, not in the year. I think this was after he beat Danny Garcia, if I'm not mistaken. But I knew that wasn't going to happen because ain't no way possible Sean going to take two back-to-back -back hard fights. People trying to get money and have a long career. So I knew that wasn't going to happen. Um, right now, if Errol signs it, I, I still give Errol the edge. I don't think it would be an easy fight for Errol unless, unless, I don't know. I have I ain't know. Maybe he could bring a mean streak out of Errol that I hadn't really seen. And to where he just really just, if he stops Spence, I mean not Spence, if he stops Sean Porter, I would truly say Errol Spence is a bad man. He's the best man at 147. If he stop him. I have to give him that because ain't nobody else stop Sean Porter. Keith Thurman to beat Sean Porter and Danny Garcia, but he ain't stop him. He ain't even drop him. If Matter of fact, if he can drop Sean Porter like twice, I say he a bad man. But I definitely don't think he's ducking. Um, the time is ticking from Sean Porter. He don't have that many fans. If you ask even people from Ohio, they're not going to know who he is. Like, <laughs> uh, CJ Goodfellow called that man Booster from Jingle All The Way. So I don't know if I want to see Booster. And when you think about it, he do kind of look like Booster. Y'all tell me what y'all think, man. Y'all think, y'all think Aaron Free Smoke Jr. ducking that smoke from Sean? Me personally, I don't. I do not think he ducking that work. I think I tested on what two, three parts. Oh yeah, Oscar De La Hoya. Basically told Gluck and what everybody else was saying, hey, you want another shot, fight somebody good. <laughs> so, we'll see how that works. It's not like Oscar De La Hoya runs the zone. I'm trying to see what fights do we have coming up. I know we got Maurice Hooker and Jose Ramirez coming up on the zone. We'll eventually have Josh Taylor versus Regis Prograce on the zone. We still got the Tony Harrison. No, we don't. I forgot Tony Harrison got hurt. That's bad. So the Charlo and I think Jose Corta, whatever his name is. We got the, I believe we got the J-Rock rematch with uh, Jared Swift Heard sometime in the year. Which Jared Heard fired his trainer, so we got to see how that goes. Tank got his mandatory next month. Of course, we got Keith Thurman versus Manny Pacquiao, July 20th. That, hey, that's the best pay-per-view card the whole year. They got Keith Thurman, Manny Pacquiao. They got Omar Figueroa and, uh, versus, I think it's your Dennis Ugas. Then they got John Molina versus, I think it's Sergey Lipinets. And there's somebody else on there. I think the co-main supposed to be Caleb Plant, if I'm not mistaken. Caleb Plant. Caleb Plant versus, uh, I forgot the dude, whatever the guy name is. But So, yeah, that's the best undercard we had all year. Yeah, man. It's, it's Monday. To anybody that make it to the end of this video, I just want y'all to be great today. Be great for the whole week. This sets the tone for your whole week. Treat it like a regular day. Don't dread it. Embrace it. You know, I don't know why people hate Monday so much. I like Monday. It's the funnest day because stuff always happening on the weekend. It gives me a sense of challenge when I walk in. So, yeah, man, y'all be great this week. And I'll be back this week with some more videos. Banco Boxing, out.